This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best all-in-one platform for all of your website building needs. Hey guys, it's Celestia, and for the millionth time, we're gonna talk about AI art today, a topic I'm sure everyone's just as tired of hearing about as I am of talking about. Unfortunately, it's just getting better and more prevalent, so the need to discuss it isn't going anywhere. This video isn't an art news segment, though. One of those will be coming later in the fall to discuss all of the many developments in the world of AI art. But no, not this video. This is a rant, the deranged ramblings of a very tired artist that's sick as hell of hearing one infuriating defense of AI image generators over and over and over again. That they're democratizing art. So sick, in fact, that I'm gonna spend this entire video explaining why, in my opinion, that defense is absolute non-recyclable, non-biodegradable trash. But before I inevitably fill myself with rage and ruin a perfectly good Sunday, let me take a moment to talk about something that doesn't suck. Today's sponsor, Squarespace. Look, you know Squarespace if you've watched my channel for any significant amount of time because I love them. Working with them so much is something that genuinely brings me a lot of joy given how long I was using their platform before I ever got that opportunity. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building and hosting platform that I made both my personal portfolio and art studio website with, and I specifically chose them back then because of the sheer number and quality of templates that they offer. They have even more now than they did then, with tons of options for every type of website you could possibly need, like portfolios, blogs, landing pages, stores, literally anything you want. And you can edit them easily and seamlessly to suit your needs with Fluid Engine, their next generation website design system that lets you customize every aspect of your site with a smooth, easy to use drag and drop system. It actually makes site building fun. If all of that wasn't enough, Squarespace also offers easy print on demand and e-commerce integration that lets you turn your site into an online store with zero hassle, create members only spaces to keep exclusive content behind a paywall, and so much more. It doesn't matter what you need your site to do. Whether you want a beautiful portfolio or a place to sell your art, you can make it on Squarespace. And you can get a free trial to test it out yourself right now by going to squarespace.com slash duchesscelestia, linked in the description, and use code duchesscelestia for 10% off your first domain purchase. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video, and please go check them out. Now, let's get back to the topic. Actually, before I do, let me take a second to make one thing very clear. This is an opinion piece. I don't personally believe that AI is democratizing art, nor do I believe that art should be democratized to that degree in the first place. But I can't and am not trying to state those beliefs as empirical facts, no matter how strongly I believe them. This is not an art news video. It's a rant that could, by a generous interpretation, be called an essay, and one that I acknowledge was written with the bias of my experience and identity as an artist. You're welcome to disagree, just please at least be civil about it if you're gonna do so vocally in the comments. Moving on, let's talk about the basis of the issue altogether. Following the emergence and subsequent drastic improvement and popularization of AI image generation, there's been plenty of debate about the ethics surrounding its use and development. This controversy is, to summarize, because the AI models being used to generate the quote-unquote art were trained to do so on datasets comprised of the work of hundreds and thousands of artists who did not consent to that use. These AI companies are now effectively profiting off of a software that is only capable of producing the results that it gets because of the art that real artists made, while those artists are not being compensated in the slightest for involuntarily contributing. Now, these AI image generators are able to reproduce individual artists' styles, signatures, and even duplicate individual pieces that they were trained on, prompting a lengthy and ongoing global investigation into whether or not the images they produce are eligible for copyright, and whether or not the process in which they're created should legally be considered plagiarism. All of that is its own can of ethical worms, and if you want to hear my thoughts on whether or not its use despite these issues is ethical, click the i-card above, because I did a video about that too. It's not what we're going to talk about today, though, because that's not the only problem that AI art generation presents. Because let's imagine a world that's actually good. I know, I'm asking you to suspect spend a lot of disbelief here, where AI wasn't trained on copyrighted art without artist consent, and all AI art generators were trained entirely on ethically sourced materials. Would it be perfectly fine then? No, in my opinion, it would not. Not because of the software itself, but because of how humans would still be most inclined to use it, as a replacement for real artists and real art. And that brings me to the biggest argument in defense of AI art, that it democratizes art, making artistic creation possible for anyone with a computer, completely eliminating the need to actually study art in order to create it. And while for some that sounds like a good thing, I believe it to be an incredibly flawed and even dangerous outlook that ignores the much wider reaching issues than art at its core. And those issues begin with the word itself, democratization. When people say that AI is democratizing art, they then have to view art as one of two things, a skill or a product. To claim that AI 
AI is democratizing art as a skill is just demonstrably false. To democratize art as a skill would be to remove the barrier of entry for a person to create it, to give them the tools they need to do so, and the education they need to learn how, something that online education has already basically accomplished. Our boys over there at Skillshare are democratizing art, not stability AI. Ultimately, for art as a skill to be democratized, the artists themselves would still need to be responsible for its creation. But that's not the case with AI. It doesn't allow anyone to create art. It allows anyone to immediately get access to art without needing to create it. This isn't the democratization of art, it's the automation of art. The people making it aren't artists because they're not actually doing the thing that's creating the art. They're just prompting an AI to. If a person with no medical training prompted an AI to use technology to perform surgery, that person wouldn't be a surgeon any more than someone who told a doctor to do it. And is that what we're striving for? A world where no one needs to learn skills or consult people who already have, but rather just instruct AI to complete every task that needs doing? Like I said, that is not democratization, it's automation. And art is only the beginning of our societal embrace of it. We're moving terrifyingly quickly towards a future where all jobs are rendered obsolete by that automation, not just artists and writers. It's easy for the masses to throw us under the bus now because we're viewed as unnecessary. But there will come a time when they're out of jobs too because a new AI advancement resulted in there being a new technology that's cheaper and easier to replace them with. That surgeon example wasn't a hypothetical. Robotic surgery driven by AI is legitimately in development. And yes, that could be incredibly revolutionary in the medical field, but where does it end? When is it so revolutionary that we just stop having human surgeons? Stop studying medicine altogether? When do we stop studying anything? Stop developing any skills at all because AI can quite simply do anything we can do better, so why not let it? It's terrifying to think about and it is most definitely not democratization. I'm not saying we shouldn't use AI for anything. I'm saying we shouldn't use it to substitute skills. We should use it to expedite the skills that we already have. But with art in particular, it's also worth noting that by automating its creation, we're devaluing human creativity as a whole. AI can feasibly complete a surgery because surgery is an objectively defined series of tasks. Automating that, for better or for worse, does not result in any kind of loss as a result of it being done by a machine and not a human. But art can only be created by creativity, which AI isn't capable of. It can replicate patterns and generate visually appealing images, but it can't be inspired by an idea and filter that idea through its own perspective that's derived from lived experiences and emotions like an artist can, which is what inherently should give that art value. The fact that AI art is so widely accepted and enjoyed, though, tells me that that's something that's becoming increasingly less valuable about it. People don't care about the value of an artist's individual interpretation of subject matter or the creative spin they put on it. They only care about the end product. People are losing appreciation for what makes art art, seeing it only as a product to be commodified. Bringing me to my next point. Like I said before, people who say AI is democratizing art have to mean one of two things by the word art. Art as a skill or art as a product. We've established now that it's impossible for AI to democratize art as a skill and that that skill is being devalued as a whole by its popularization. So now let's talk about people who mean this defense to say it democratizes it as a product, something that everyone can now have access to, access that they would previously have had to pay for. This sense of entitlement to things that we would normally have to pay for or learn to make ourselves is seen throughout more fields than just art, though. Kids are getting chat GPT to write their essays because they think they're entitled to a grade they didn't earn. Lawyers are using it to consult on cases because they think they're entitled to win them even when they didn't work to. People are using it to write code because they think they're entitled to have programs they didn't pay for or learn to create. The popularization of AI has revealed a deeply ugly side of humanity, a side that feels as if it deserves to have whatever it wants without the need to work or pay to get it. But from what I've seen, art appears to be facing this entitlement more than other fields as a result of AI, with more and more people treating it as if it's something that they should just be able to have without paying an artist to make it. For example, I mentioned in an old art news video that Corridor Crew used AI to generate an entire animated video, specifically claiming that it was democratizing their ability to create content. Obviously, I criticized that, because they should have hired animators instead. In response, I heard some arguments claiming that because Corridor Crew is a VFX studio and not an animation studio, they never would have made the project in the first place if it weren't for AI, and that therefore no animator jobs were lost. That argument is flawed because it's based on that same entitlement that I'm talking about here. That Corridor Crew was entitled to be able to produce animated content without needing to learn how or hire someone who does know how. If they would not have been able to produce that content without doing it themselves or hiring them to, why should they be able to make it anyway? It's not just them either. Writers and publishers alike have been using AI to generate book covers, many of whom justify it by saying that they couldn't afford to hire an artist to do so. And it's the exact same issue. Their sense of entitlement to something that they can neither make themselves or pay for. In my opinion, if you can't animate a project or hire an animator, you shouldn't be able to make an animated project. If you can't
can't create a book cover or hire an artist to do it for you, your book shouldn't have a cover. It's the basis of economy. Like, if you can't grow food yourself, you aren't willing to learn how, and you aren't willing to pay a farmer for theirs, you can't just say, well, you know, give it to me anyway. If we just got everything we wanted without effort or payment, we would literally stop functioning as a society because nobody would be making the stuff we needed anymore. And yet you don't see people saying, you know, well, I want an iPad, but I don't know how to make one and I can't afford to buy one, but I'm still entitled to one, right? Or at least you don't see them getting widespread support for the sentiment. And I think a lot of that boils down to the inherent devaluation of artists that's been widely accepted for a very long time now. The sometimes conscious, sometimes subconscious view of professional art as less than other careers, because it's not necessary, but rather a luxury. And to a degree, I understand that as a concept. We need doctors and lawyers and engineers, so of course we'll view them as more valuable than artists. But artists aren't the only ones providing unnecessary services that people want but don't need. People don't need to travel or play video games, but travel agents and game developers aren't looked down on nearly as much as visual artists and even writers to some degree. They're providing equally unnecessary but still desirable services, it's just that society seems to have come to some false understanding that those unnecessary services take more time, effort, and skill than art. Artists and writers, subsequently, deal with their careers facing stigma as frivolous or easy, which I believe has led to people feeling entitled to their services free of charge, since those services aren't being viewed as valuable enough to warrant what they're charging. People have been shaming artists for charging living wages since long before AI, and this sense of entitlement to their art without having to pay for it is made abundantly clear here in the public opinion of AI art generation. And quite frankly, I find it repulsive. If you're too lazy to learn to draw and you also won't pay an artist, you don't deserve to just have art anyway. Artists have to study for their entire lives to develop the skills to create what they do, and I'm sorry, but if you're not willing to do the same or pay them the wages they deserve, you shouldn't be able to have art. You are not entitled to that. Artists are providing a service like anyone else, and if you want that service, you should have to pay for it like any other one. Saying that AI is making the creation of creative projects more accessible and democratized is an insult to all of the artists who actually worked to be able to make them in the first place, because they're proof that it was always accessible if you were willing to work hard to develop the skills to do so. And honestly, I don't care if that means that there are less creative projects as a result. Projects made with AI that require no work, effort, or actual creative input from artists are just lazy, low-quality caricatures of the human-made creative projects that we've all known and loved for years before AI came and took a massive shit all over the industry. If Corridor Crew couldn't create their janky-ass pseudo-anime video they were so proud of without AI and wouldn't have considered it otherwise, their janky-ass pseudo-anime video shouldn't have been able to exist. People shouldn't just be entitled to content creation that they have learned zero skills for and didn't even create themselves at all. And to be clear, before you say it, I'm not saying that using AI to create projects and images isn't work. I'm sure Corridor Crew put a lot of work into that video, but it's nowhere near the amount of work that a team of animators would have put in. Not even in the same ballpark. And that's the case for most, if not all, AI-generated content. To make a piece of art, an artist needs to thumbnail its composition, designate a light source, create a color palette, finish a sketch, line that sketch, decide on how to use that color palette most effectively when coloring it, rendering it based on ideal color theory and the light source, and finalize it to fix any errors and balance the piece's tone. To make an AI-generated image, you have to have an idea idea and type it in, and maybe revise it a few times with further prompts and specifications. You don't need to know anything about art to make it. And you don't even know how the generated image was made or why it looks good. That is not even vaguely comparable to the amount of work, experience, and knowledge required to make real art. In conclusion, with all of that said, I hope you can at least understand now why I hate the defense of AI democratizing art quite so much. To me, at least, that democratization is an illusion, a pretty word to hide an ugly truth. That art was already democratized, available to anyone willing to study or pay for it. And that giving access to it to anyone who isn't, too, is not making things equal or fair. It's completely erasing the need for a valuable skill and replacing those who worked hard to learn it. Of course, that's only if you think that what AI makes is art. As I said, in my opinion, for something to be truly considered art, it has to have been created deliberately and creatively, based on an artist's own idea and inspiration, and interpreted through their unique lens of artistic skill and personal experiences. It has to express the way that the artist views the idea, something that renders the final product completely unique given that no two people will share the exact same skill, preferences, and life experiences required to view one idea exactly the same. AI, quite simply, can't do that. It can never replace or even emulate human creativity. You're welcome to disagree and call art anything that's visually appealing or has aesthetic value, but I think you're wrong, and I think you're contributing to AI's rapid and disappointing devaluation of human creativity and storytelling, which is leading to an undeniable loss of jobs, opportunities,
sympathies and appreciation for real human artists. This AI-bolstered commercialization of art as simply a product to serve a purpose is an insult to what used to be an art community that valued human expression, and is actively homogenizing the art that we see in media and online to a startling and disturbing degree. Since without human artists experimenting with new and creative techniques to make their work different and unique, all we have is AI churning out the exact same styles and subject matter over and over. Art is inherently human. It's one of the oldest and most widespread forms of expression that there is, and with every passing day we're moving towards a world where it's not a form of expression at all anymore, because the machines creating it aren't capable of expressing anything. They have nothing to express. It's simply a means to an end, and that end is usually just profit. It makes me both sad and afraid to think of how many young aspiring artists look at AI-generated art and feel like there's no point in learning how to draw, because they'll never be able to achieve those results. It makes me both disappointed and angry to think of how many young aspiring artists look at AI generators and decide to be lazy instead of starting, because there's no point in learning how to draw if you can just make a machine do it for you. The future of the art world as a whole is at stake here, because the popularization of AI art isn't making art as a skill more accessible to everyone like this stupid argument would have you believe. It's actively stopping human people from ever becoming real artists. And eventually, without real human artists, there will come a time when real art no longer exists. And if that's the case, all AI will have left to learn from is its own work, leading to utter artistic and creative stagnation in the entire art world. I've seen a lot of assholes out there respond to the argument that AI is replacing artists with, good, we don't need them anyway, they should be replaced. And I think that's a very, very short-sighted view, because it could easily be applied to anyone doing any job, and soon, it will. I guarantee you that if we continue down this route of democratizing skills by automating them with AI and eliminating the need for us to learn them, 90% of the people saying that artists should be replaced will have that said about their own professions in the very, very near future. It's artists now. It's you next. And eventually, it's everyone. If the dangerous mentality of viewing AI automating and replacing the need for human learned and executed skills as democratization continues to proliferate. It's the first step towards a terrifying future where anyone watching this video right now will be liable to be replaced too. And that keeps me up at night. Not just because I'm an artist, but because I'm a human. And as it becomes more and more normalized to choose the superior efficiency and convenience of machine-based replacements for human services, we're gonna gradually lose ourselves to a world where being human means being redundant. And I don't know if we can stop it anymore. All I know is that I personally won't stop fighting against it anyway. I'm not gonna lie, this video got a whole lot darker than I thought it would end up being when I started writing this script. I think it's because I've spent a long time lately researching all of the advancements that AI is making, all of the amazing ways it can do everything we can do better, and falling into a legitimate existential crisis over the fact that I don't see a future where we reject that. I don't think the majority of people would value a human surgeon who could make a mistake and needs to be paid a large salary more than a robot that will do it flawlessly every time for free, at least aside from its initial creation, installation, and upkeep fees. I don't think the majority of people would place value on the fact that a human did the thing they needed rather than a machine that could do it better or faster, because we're quickly growing towards a society that has devalued human connection and identity so much that there's no point to it anymore. I live above a really cute cafe where I write a lot of my scripts. I order the same thing every time, and the staff know who I am, and they know my order, and I feel a sense of comfort in that familiarity. I like going there to work, because I like being surrounded by familiar faces that I don't know personally, but can share small talk with and feel a sense of community with anyway. And I am terrified to death of the thought that by the time I'm 30, there will no longer be any societal value in things like that. Why order from a familiar barista and chat about that wild thunderstorm last night when an AI-powered machine can make my coffee faster, better, and save me the time it would take to talk to a person? Will we all give up the value in the fact that another human being is doing something for us, and we are, for however brief that moment may be, connecting with them, just because a machine can provide the same service better? I hope not. I really do, because I don't want that world. Claiming that AI is democratizing art is just the beginning. It's the first in a long line of arguments that doesn't just devalue human creativity, but human identity altogether, and it'll take us straight into that world if we don't stop it. Next time you choose to use AI to make art rather than hire an artist, read an AI written book rather than one from a human author, or watch a video animated by AI rather than supporting human animators, think about why, and think about what's next. Thank you for watching this depressing ass video, and I hope you enjoyed it, or at least found it thought provoking. Special thank you as always to channel members Cafe Soleil, Joseph Solomon, TC Pratt, Zelda Deverack 42, King Good James, and Haruki Kenway, as well as patrons Batman, Kyle Lowe, Blue Swanson, Cora Fear, Jamisha Walker, Alengshi, Kim Yen, Shamil Sheep, Crazy Hassar, Gen Tong, Grace and Xavier, MG, La Mage, TC Pratt, Finn, Grim Spectre, Celine Merriman, Ash W, Eldritchia, The Stray Dog, Allura, Greg Noble, Decagon, Milshio, and Jenny Chan for their support, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.